longer go in cycles. This is the day that I will no longer wake up tired in my body. This is the day that I will walk out of here pain free. This is the day that I will walk out of here with financial abundance. This is the day that my children will fall into alignment with the will of God.
Oh, come on, this is a celebration. Come on, say hallelujah. You got a reason to celebrate because the Lord has been good to you. Yes, he has. He's made ways out of no ways. Do I have any witnesses in here that can testify that the Lord has been good? He is good. would say when I think of the goodness of Jesus you don't have to say a word but when I just think of his goodness when I just think of his goodness and all that he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah oh yes oh yes Glory, 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 glory. I got a praise. I got a praise that I got to get out. I got a praise. I got a praise 
I got a praise that I got to get out. I got a praise. I dare you to say, I got a praise. I got a praise that I got to get out. I got a praise. Oh. somebody in here uh, uh, they don't know they don't know the story behind your praise but I believe I got some witnesses in here that there's a praise on the inside of you there's a praise on the inside of you all that you have gone through all that you have went through you've got a reason to praise him Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. See, the reason why the devil don't want you to praise him, because for every dance that you do, you're doing nothing but stepping on the devil's head. For every dance that you do, you're stepping on the devil's head. You want to make him mad, get you a dance right now, because every step, every step is a step on the devil's head. Get you a dance right now. Dance on the devil's head right now. Dance on the devil's head right now. Yes. Yes. I'm telling 
you. The devil don't like this.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, we're trying to move on. We, we, we're trying to move on. Okay. What, what, welcome to the new life experience. Well, welcome to the new life experience. Where it's not just church, it's an experience. Welcome to all of our virtual worshipers. Welcome to all of our in-person worshipers. We thank you. We thank you. Right there. It's right there. It's right there. Uh huh. Some of y'all don't realize what's happening, but you are being set free right now. That's what's happening. You're being set free. You're being set. The, the Lord said, I listen. There are some things that had you bound. There are some things that had you literally fetters, fettered down. But he said, I'm breaking the chains right now. The chains are being broken. The chains are, be oh, glory, 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 glory. Every word curse has been broken and destroyed. <laughs> every warlock plan, every witch plan has been broken and destroyed under the apostolic anointing. Y'all, y'all better hear me. I wish somebody shout, it's been destroyed. It's been destroyed. It's, it's been destroyed. Every curse that's been sent against you, it's been destroyed. Every, every strategy and tactic, every diabolical tactic of the enemy has been destroyed now. It's been interrupted now. It's been canceled now. Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil and all of his mess. Let me tell you something. What I picked up in the spirit. Uh -huh. There are some people that are so evil they have gone to the witches and the palm readers to try to get spells cast on you. But I come to tell you this morning that the spell has been broken. The spell has The spell has been broken. Some of you have been wondering what's been going on. It was the spell. It was the spell that was cast against you. But I come to tell you the spell has been not, oh God, it's been broken, destroyed, and sent back to the sender. Some evil folks been working against you. All of your stuff had all of your stuff tied up. But your stuff has been loose this morning. I wish somebody shout, 
And those of you all that are tuned in, I wish I would type that in. My stuff has been loosed. I need for you all to shout that in this place right now. My stuff has been loosed. Come on, type that in. Type that in. Type it in. My stuff has been loosed. Yeah. Yeah. So we just thank you, praise team. All right. We got to move on. We got to move on. We, we've got to move on. We're so excited about what the Lord is doing. He gets all the glory. It belongs, belongs to him. Power belongs to God. We do salute each of you. I will tell you that the presence of God is here. Even on our live feed, the presence of the Lord is manifesting. The tangible anointing of God is in this place. It's, it's on this broadcast right now. All the thing you gotta do is just connect with us. Just connect, just open up your spirit. And just connect, just connect, just connect, just connect, just receive it, just receive it. Those of you all that are tuned in virtually right now, just receive it, just receive it. You may not be here in person, but you are tuned in virtually. Just receive it, just receive it, just receive it. Yes, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We know that we're going to prepare now for our announcements. We're going to prepare. Um, come down. Um, Not only are we just a church, our aim, our mission is to provide and be in place to be able to provide services and to help the community, to be actively involved in the community, to, to take Jesus out of the four walls and to go into the marketplace, into the community, and to be assistance and to be in in position to be able to help people. We know that this last year has been with COVID and now uh, it's on the rise again. Let me tell you, I was on a panel this past week thank, and thank you all, everyone that tuned in. Uh, I thank God for the favor to have been able to set, to sit on a panel discussion with Dr. Toomey, one of the leading physicians with this COVID. Uh, she works directly with uh, Dr. Fauci um, a panel, a great panel at Morehouse School of Medicine this past week talking about this COVID and this Delta variant that's, that's out. Now, I'm going to tell you, I found something out very interesting. And I want y'all to catch this. I want y'all to catch this. Um, the, the COVID, the original COVID strain that we dealt with last year, watch this. Let me show you how this thing is changing. It was targeted towards the older society, the older community. Uh, it wasn't so much attacking the youth. But this strand 
is doing the exact opposite. It is attacking the youth. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all missed that. This strand, and, and, and Dr. Toomey says something that caught my attention. I want y'all to hear this. I want y'all to hear me. She, in her description of, of COVID and this Delta variant, and, uh, 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 she, she described it very, very interesting. And it has really stuck out in my mind. Watch this. She said, it's smart. It's constantly dwarfing and changing. Okay, y'all missed that. It's smart. It's constantly dwarfing and changing. When she said that, it caught my attention. I said, it's smart. I said, now, you're giving it as if it has a level of intelligence. When you say it's smart, in order to be smart, that means you have to have a level of intelligence. Whenever they put something in place, it switches. Y'all, let me tell you something. Don't play with this. This thing is serious. Now what's happening, as it's changing, it's smart. So what did it do for those of you all who are not vaccinated? So it, 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 this, let me show you what did it do. It'll jump on you. Don't bother you. you. You're asymptomatic. And it'll jump on you to a child, to a youth. And that's who is, is, is attacking. So you, with your unvaccinated self, say, I'm not going to get vaccinated. It's okay, all right. I ain't after you now. I'm going to jump on you to get to the youth. So now you carry that infection. You carry it. And here's a child who does not have the vaccination and it jumps on them and it utterly destroys them. Okay. All right. And y'all still playing with this thing. My eyes were open this past week, this past Thursday, to a whole nother level of understanding the, the strategy of the enemy and how this thing is working. This thing is, is so systematic. It's strategic. It, man, well, here it is. I don't know what's in it. Really? When you go to, when you go to the, the pick up your prescription at the pharmacy, you assume that your prescription, the name that's on your prescription is what's in that bottle. But guess what? You really don't even know. But guess what you do? Take it. Okay, y'all still miss that. Let me show you how this thing works. When you go to the doctor and you get a flu shot, they say it's a flu shot, but you don't know what's in that. But guess what you do? Take it. But then when it comes, I don't know what's in it. But, man, this thing is now sent to destroy our young folk. There are, they were saying, and I'm moving on, Parents now are burying their children. Oh, can you imagine burying your child? Well, that's what's happening. And, and I'm encouraging leaders, pastors, because there are a lot of pastors that have not gotten the vaccination. I'm scared I'm going to get an arm growing out my forehead. Really? Come on. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Now here's the, here's the other part of that. And they reject the knowledge. And then what did God say? Now I'm going to reject you. Listen, people of God. I got it. I'm fully vaccinated. No arm has grown out of my forehead. I don't have fingers coming out my ears. This is the type of stuff that they're, they're saying. I'm scared to get vaccinated because I'm scared I might grow a third eye. I, have, I only have two eyes. And here's the thing. Just because you don't believe it, you think that stops the devil. The devil's still doing this thing. 
He's like, a matter of fact, you're empowering him, saying, okay, go on, do it. I'm like, good, good. So I want this, I was enlightened this past week. So I thank God for the favor of being able to sit on that panel. It was, it was, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm working very close with, with Peach State uh, to bring awareness and knowledge and, and to bring a service to this community because it ain't, it's not going to stop. This thing, as they say, it's smart and it's constantly changing. So we've got to be on it, people of God. We've got to be on it. I encourage you. I encourage you. It ain't the mark of the beast. I heard somebody say, well, that, taking the vaccination, you, you taking the mark of the beast. That's not true. All of this misinformation out there that has people, and people believe, believe that stuff. Well, that's the mark of the beast. No, it's not. It's not the mark of the beast. Well, they, 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 you take the vaccination, they can track you. How many of you all have one of these? Everybody, guess what? They tracking you. If you have a cell phone, you are trackable. Okay, all right, let me go on. So I thank you all, I, I mean, uh, again, for, for tuning in um, this past Thursday. Um, but as we said, through the COVID, so many people got this place. You know, they lost their job. They weren't able to pay their rent. And so we've been blessed to be on, uh, in position in a place here with one clergy making to uh, be on a panel to, to bring uh, this relief money that's been sent, uh, the eviction relief program. Come on, let's, let's play. Uh, I'm asking everybody now to just watch the monitors right here. Let's, let's, let's release this. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken a toll on communities across Georgia. Unfortunately, many are still out of work, but the bills are still due. That is why the State of Georgia Rental Assistance Program was created, to help tenants catch up on months of unpaid rent and utility bills. Apply through the Georgia Department of Community Affairs to receive the relief you need today. Visit georgiarentalassistance.ga.gov to learn more and see if you qualify. And we have flyers, so if you will see one of our ushers at the end of service, if you, it may not affect you, but you may know someone that needs the help. Amen. See our usher. Amen. We, we just got to get this information out uh, for, for those who need that. And, and let me show you how, how, how they're really doing is They are even now, they are providing three months in advance rent payment. So they'll pay your back rent and then give you three months in advance. Okay, this is how aggressive they are with this program and trying to get the help to, to our people. They are not only paying back rent, but they are providing three months in advance. Okay, all right. So, so, so I, I, th these are the services. So as my ear is pressed and, and I'm in position to hear, I'm going to continue to bring this information to you all and to uh, our virtual worshipers uh, for this service because it, it is important. Amen. Next announcement. This, this uh, Friday, the, the 31st, the 31st, um, I will be virtual. Can you, can you make it bigger? Amen. So everyone can see it. But we will be uh, live um, with um, uh, uh, evangelist, with evangelist Harris, Angela Harris. Amen. We're going to be live with her for her conference. I'll be closing out her conference um, uh, this week, this Friday. We'll be sending a flyer throughout the church. We'll be sending that throughout the church so you can um, tune in. It's going to be virtual. Amen. It's going to be on Zoom. I will get the information out, but that is it. It's kind of hard to see. Amen. But uh, we'll see. Those of you all that are online, you can see it. Um, it's this uh, July the 31st. Amen. At 8.30 p.m. I will be on the guest to close out this revival um, at 8.30 p.m. And you will see the login information there. Those of you all that are watching online, you can see it better. Uh, you can see it, Evangelist White. We are so excited to be connected with her. She's been having a 31-day uh, revival, amen, throughout the month of July. So we'll be closing that out as well. Next slide. 
Amen. I'm encouraging everyone. We're approaching, amen, our state conference of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. I believe in covering. Listen, every pastor needs a covering. I've never seen so many now out there without covering, and it's, it's, it is just unbelievable. How in the world is a pastor, I want you to submit, but I'm not submitted to someone. That's out of order. But there are so many that are out of order, out of alignment right now. Um, so I believe in covering. I'm covered. The ministry is covered. We are connected under the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. We will be having our state, state of Georgia virtual conference, amen, August the 7th and 8th. Amen. So I encourage you all to go and register. Amen. Lady Bell will be teaching a class, amen, on leaving a legacy in the state conference. So make sure you go and register, sign up for her class um, for, for, the, uh, for the empowerment session under her teaching class. She will be teaching this year, amen, leaving a legacy. So make sure you go and log in and sign up. Register. It's free. Registration is free. Amen. There's a scan code. There's a scan code. Uh, if those of you have your phone, you can do it right now. Amen. If you just, just scan, the, scan the, the, the scanner code, the code that's on there, and it'll take you directly to the site. Amen. You can register, but make sure you do that. Register for free. That's, that's the state of Georgia, our virtual conference, August the 7th and 8th. It's going to be great. I'm telling you, it's going to bless you real, real good. It's going to bless you. Amen. I think that's all of our announcements. Amen. I think that's all of our announcements. And so we want to make sure, encourage you, make sure that you're in position and, uh, and in place. We're going to prepare now for the word. Amen. We're going to prepare for the word. I, I'm enjoying this time. Uh, <laughs> Y'all don't believe this, but I'm tired. Okay, let me say that again. Y'all ain't gonna believe this, but as pastor, I'm tired. Amen. And I thank God that he's given able and capable leadership to come and, and, and to take on. This last year, uh, dealing with COVID has been uh, very draining as, as a pastor. Um, because this is something that's never been scripted. There's no book of, of, of how to pastor through this COVID and, and what to do. So we've been literally operating in trial and error. Let me stay before God and let me see if this will work. And well, that ain't working. Let me try this and, and that and, and man, and, 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 and I'm just tired. So I've decided to sit myself down and, and just, just sit back and, and allow the elders and the teachers to come forth because God has gifted them Amen. To, to be able to, to operate. What's the use of training leaders and if you don't allow them to come forth? Amen. That's, that's, that's redundant. So I praise that we started out our, our own Elder Jarvis, uh, Nipier. He released the word. And then came last week, Elder Wood released the word. And this morning, let me tell you all something. We have another one of our elders that's about to come. And I'm getting ready to come down, TJ. I'm going to come down. Amen. To She's going to release this word. I love this elder. This elder means so much to me because she has literally taken me and, 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 just, and just loved on me and, and, and given me words of encouragement. And when I wanted a cake, when Lady Bell wouldn't fix me a cake because she said I didn't need it, hallelujah, this elder would come and I wouldn't tell her that Lady Bell wouldn't do it, so she'll fix me a good cake, and, and i eat it before I get, for, before she could see it, and, and hallelujah, then she'll come back and fuss at me, saying, why you didn't tell me they didn't want you to get no cake? <laughs> but I really do, her family, her husband, her daughter's here, I, I, you know, you, you learn to, to cherish good people. You learn that as a pastor. As a pastor, when God give you good people, hey man, you, you know, you love on them. And so I thank God for this elder. I have been very faithful and dedicated to the ministry. Uh, I, there's so much I could say, but I'm not because I don't want my pig ears to get cut off. Because she makes some of the best pig ears in the world. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Ain't that right, Deacon Larry? <laughs> Listen, y'all. I want, she, 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 y'all think she's quiet, but I found out she ain't quiet. Lord have mercy, Jesus. But this is our very own. I love her so dearly. I want you all to receive this morning our very own 
Elder Patricia Harris. Let's receive her as she comes as the Lord releases a word through her. morning new life thank God for the opportunity just to bring a word on this morning and father I thank you today I thank you for your life I thank you for the opportunity just to speak a word, Lord, a word that you have given me for the house on today, Lord. I just pray that you be glorified here in this hour. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, one of the hardest things we can do in life is to um, examine ourselves. Um, and Pastor has been the last two weeks teaching on Bible study about uh, God said it's time to do an assessment of yourselves. So God had given me this word even before he started teaching that. And it's, it's not ironic, it's just that God is so, his timing is just impeccable. And Pastor's been preaching that, and he's given me this word. And I tell y'all, um, what God gave me this morning, part of it is, God, you want me to tell that? You want me to reveal that? And he said, yes. So... And in examining myself back in October of last year, I prayed and asked God, God, show me anything in me that is not like you. TJ, would you pull up the subject in scripture for today? Knocking on heaven's door. And scripture is Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. Would you go ahead and pull the verses up? I'm reading from the Amplified Version. I can't, it's so small, I can't hardly <laughs> see it. Uh, search me thoroughly and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Verse 34. And see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the way, in the everlasting way. So y'all back in October, like I said, I had been praying God to show me anything in me that's not like you. So one Sunday evening, um, my husband and I were in our bathroom and there was we had an altercation a physical altercation that was initiated by me and believe it or not we hadn't been arguing anything nothing he will sometimes come by me and and pat me on my behind and he's been doing it for years for some reason, <laughs> something, it's just like something came over me. And I literally started hitting him. I, and when I, it, it's, like I said, it was like something came over me. So when I came to my senses, I came to myself. We sat down, began to talk. And, you know, he's a, you know, I can come to him with anything. We can talk about anything. But I'm the type, I'm, I am quiet. 
reserved and some things I'll, you know, you just hold inside and you just hold inside until it just for some it just explodes at some point or another. And literally that's what happened. And so we sat down and talked. I said, Well, I'm frustrated. And I was frustrated because I felt that, you know, I was doing everything in the house. I was literally doing everything. And he wasn't doing his fair share. So we agreed that fighting wasn't, you know, a res resolution. So that we had to just, whenever I began to feel that way, I just needed to talk to him about it. So, you know, after our conversation, then I began to dig deeper. I dove deep into my heart and I said, God, have I given the devil a foothold in my life? And I began to, as I began to knock on heaven's door, this is the response that God gave me. TJ, to pull up point number one, please. God said, my compassions are renewed every morning, and I can approach the throne of grace with confidence and find grace which allows me not to doubt God's love for me. Having the assurance of God's forgiveness gives me the strength to forgive myself and others. God said, I forgive you, daughter. Forgive yourself. Sometimes we beat up on ourselves for things that we do, mistakes that we make. God said, my compassions are, moved, removed, are renewed every morning. All you have to do is come to me. Come to me. Give it to me. Okay, y'all, that was in October. At the end of November, Larry got sick, and he was diagnosed with COVID and pneumonia. And I said, God, are you trying to show me again that I wasn't doing everything because now I literally do have to do everything? Like I said, God's timing is impeccable. And we have to get to a place that we see God's hand in everything that goes on. We may think it's trivial, but God is moving and God is working. So as I knocked again on heaven's door, pull up uh, point number two, TJ. And this is what God's reply to me was as I asked again. God said, you don't have to be perfect. I only ask that of my son, Jesus, because he had to be perfect to redeem you back to me. He said, if I wanted you to be perfect, I would have given you a perfect David, Moses. I had to put some women in there because Sarah, Miriam, etc. anybody in the Bible. So God said, I only ask that you be willing. then as Larry's condition worsened as he was put on a ventilator and I talked to his uh, the nurse practitioner every day and she called me and she told me that Mrs. Harris we're doing everything that we can for him his body just has to respond she said, I want to prepare you for what we don't know what's going to happen. So she was telling me it's a possibility that he may not make it. And y'all know again, I had to go knocking on heaven's door. And God said to me, he woke me up. That Saturday morning, and he said, 
Don't you worry about him. I got him. He said, I don't waste anything. Whatever you are going through, I allowed it. And Romans 28 says that all things, not some things, all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything works together for the good of those who love God. He said, I'm using this to draw you all to me. I'm using it to draw your children, the grandkids, because they need to see my power. So, um, Larry survived, of course. He's here right now. <laughs> Praise God and thank God. But y'all, after 17 days in the hospital, and of course they weren't ready for him to come home, but he said he had to come home. So I had to okay for them to allow him to come home. He came home, couldn't do, still couldn't do anything. I still was doing everything. He had um, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, and a nurse that visited the house three times a week. And like I said, God said he don't waste anything. So in this, God was still showing me that I didn't have to be perfect and that I could I needed to turn to him for everything and that his compassions were renewed every day. So, new life. God has been good to all of us. And the things that we go through, we, we go through for a, for a reason. He wants us to, be t to use what we go through as testimonies for him. So when you're given the opportunity to share the things that we've gone through, the life struggles, whatever the case may be, and give God the glory let the world see God. And Jesus said in his, to his disciples, the world will know that you are my disciples by you showing love to each and every one, to those that despitefully use you, those that talk about you at work, those that whatever that they may do against you or say against you, uh, those that despise you, hate your children, Whatever the case may be, God says that, show love. And that's a hard thing to do, y'all. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. But God said, be willing to at least try. At least try. And lastly, y'all, God gave me this. I call this one a nugget because I think I'll uh, cherish this forever. Pull up uh, nugget one, one. God said, there is no dough that you keep talking about a door. There is no door. He said, you created the door. The veil was ripped when Jesus died on the cross. You have free access, y'all. We have free access to the throne. Thank you. I am Elder, you blessed us. Knocking on heaven's door. That's a word. You know, it's interesting because the Lord has been dealing with the ministry and uh, 
in our teachings as elders said I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, in the area we've been talking about revival and how when I say revival the Lord started this last year before COVID hit not a church service but an outpouring of the spirit and I know that it seems dim like people are running or going away from the church or away from the Lord you know we're seeing a falling away like never before but any time that there's a revival revival is like a tsunami if any of you all know how tsunami operates before there the water uh, 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 overtakes it recedes and the greater the receding of the water, the greater the overflow. So, revival, we are seeing, we are seeing or experiencing a great receding. But the Lord said this, get ready for resurgence. How now? There's now. Here, here's here's why the enemy is fighting you. As as this word is so on point. Let me show you how, why the enemy is fighting you. I was sharing this with the praise team this morning. Let me show you. Let me tell you something about uh, spiritual warfare. Let me show you how this works. Let me show you about spiritual warfare. There, are, the satanic kingdom is very strategic. It is orderly. It is more orderly than a lot of us. It is very systematic. Watch this, Elder Green. So Satan, what Satan does, there are a group of demons that we're not familiar with. We, we are, when we say demons, we always think somebody's head turning around and oh, all that kind of stuff, you know. But there are a group of demons created and assigned to do this one thing. They're called watchers. Everybody say watchers. Their assignment, they're not going to scare you. They're not going to bump into your dress or make your mirror fall. They're not going to do none of that. Their assignment by the devil is to do one thing and one thing only. Watch you. Observe you. Find out what are you feeling. What are you experiencing. What are you going through. What hits you. What affects you hard. And uh, That's their assignment, to watch you. And what they do, I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to understand how this works. They report to Satan. They come with a, a resume of you, of their analysis, of their observation. I, I observe this about Elder Sean. Sean Napier, this is what I observe. Okay, this gets to Sean. That gets to Sean. This is, you really want to get on the Sean's skin, do this. Do that. Same with everyone. Nikki, do this. Do that. Do this. And he gives that report to Satan. This is how the weapons are formed against you. So then what happens is from that report, from that report, Satan then crafts up a weapon based upon that observation of you. Okay, mm, so this is what you're telling me, watcher? Yes. Okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to... I'm going to fashion up this weapon specifically for you. That's why what don't hit me may not, may, what, what hits you may not hit me. Because it wasn't made for me, it was made for you. So what happens is that weapon is formed against each one of us. No one is exempt. No one is exempt. So on that particular day, as Ella was talking, you know, Norman Larry come and do that every day. There ain't been no problem. But you may have had a bad day, or you may have been stressed out about something else, or something. And, and, and when he did that, Satan knew, okay, she already on edge. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to form that fashion. And it, see, and it, happens, it happens up here before it happens here. The weapon happens here first before it comes through here. So when that happened, it, it, you snap. This is how spiritual warfare works. So now, every one of us, 
we're dealing with a weapon that was formed by the devil against us to attack in whatever area. And we got to recognize that. And in recognizing that, understand, well, what's the purpose of it? Why, why is he doing that? Why? Because he knows more than you do. Let me tell you what do I mean. Satan is already in the spirit realm. We are in the earth realm trying to desire to see in the spirit realm. Did y'all hear that? Satan is, okay, let me show you. In Job, it talked about how the angels came to present themselves before God himself and Satan came out, so we can't even do that. So Satan already sees what we can't see, what we're praying for discernment to see. He don't need discernment to see it. He's already up there and see it. Oh, see, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. We praying for discernment. Oh, Lord, open my eyes to see uh, in that realm. He ain't got to pray that prayer because he sees it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So he sees what we can't see, but what we're desiring to see. So since we can't see it and he see it, he said, I can't stop it from manifesting to you, but what I'll do, I'll form that weapon to mess with you so bad that you get out of position. So when that thing comes, it blows right past you because you now have allowed it to shift you out of position. He didn't stop it because he can't stop it. But what he does is use his ministry. Say so he got a ministry. You know what his ministry is? Against you. To attack you in your mind, body, soul, and spirit. So what I do, I can't stop God. But I use my ministry. I use mine. You know, you know the devil knowing it too. Okay, see, so y'all don't want to talk real talk when it comes to the spiritual warfare. Satan is anointed to do what he do. That's why he do it so well. He's so anointed that God himself named him a prince. He has the anointing of a prince. Oh, see, y'all don't want to talk about real spiritual warfare. He has the anointing of a prince. He was declared by the Lord, by God, a prince. So that means, if you know a prince has, like Prince Harry, he has authority because he is a prince. He next to line. See, see what y'all don't understand, when you understand the, the, the makeup of Lucifer, he was, man, I wish I could really, we got to go. I wish I could really expound, expound to you who Lucifer really was. There were three archangels that was created by God himself to sit next to him. Now, they were not equal in power, but they had the authority. Okay, you don't believe me? How do you think a third of heaven fell? A third of heaven fell because Lucifer had a level of authority. We don't know what that number was. Okay, I want y'all to get the, the weight of this. One third of heaven fell. Heaven was created by God. Everything in heaven was created by God. What kind of authority made something that was sitting next to God every day saw him seven days a week, 365 days a year that can cause them to turn their back on God? That's some type of authority. This is what we're dealing with here. This is spiritual warfare that we're dealing with every day. And we're looking at individuals. This ain't a, that's why the, the scripture tells us we ain't wrestling against flesh and blood. This ain't about it. I can't stand Sonya. I can't stand Eric Bell. Man, you missing it. Totally. When he say, every day I give you grace. Every day, everybody in here need grace. Okay, you don't need grace. Something wrong with you. Every day. 
say we need grace. And nobody is exempt from that grace. Just because I'm pastor, oh, you know, we, you know, we, 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 we crazy. We are crazy. We got a whole bunch of cultural stuff that is that ain't biblical, but we living by it. There are a lot of cultural stuff that is not biblical, but it's become religious. And we live in that religion and think we're doing something. God, God's like, you know what? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Because that stuff you've been doing, ain't, it was never part of me. You created it. It's a form of godliness. And then we start looking at somebody else's struggle. When you got a weapon formed against you yourself. Man, we got to get this thing together, people of God. Those of you all that are tuning in, that word elder, I'm telling you, we're knocking on heaven. Oh, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. You know the sad thing about it? It's some folks outside that are going to make it in before we do. Why do you think the Bible said judgment is going to start first, not in the world, but us religious cultural folks jumping, shot, bucking, oh, whoo, and Lord, like, I don't, what's, what's that? What that is? Uh, no, no, I, I say that. What that is? God be like, what that is? That ain't me. I don't see me in that. What, what is that? It's cultural. It's cultural church. And God ain't pleased. God is not pleased with this cultural church. Let me show you how it's cultural. Go to Israel right now where the Bible and all that came from. Y'all see, let me show you how crazy we are. This one, it wasn't written for us. We were Gentiles. It was written for the Jews. We became engrafted in because of Jesus. So when you go and research the Bible, all of those... Let, let me help y'all. Do it's over three thousand laws. The Bible say, when you violate one, you violated them all. Under the Mosaic law, thou shalt not this and Deuteronomy. And all, they're over. If I'm not mistaken, if I remember my theological training, there was over three thousand laws. And the Bible says, when you violate one law, you violated them all, even though you didn't do it. So watch this. When you judge somebody else, you just violate all the other laws yourself. That's why Jesus said there's no way they can, they can do it. He said, I didn't abolish the old, I came to fulfill it. Thank God for Jesus dying on the cross. So in that, Sister Jay, in that I'm sick of cultural church I'm sick of it y'all it ain't about a book and a dance and a what profit a man to gain the world and lose your soul all that shouting and running and you going to hell He said, I don't even know you. I'm looking for my fruit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Don't nobody want to go through nothing. We want everything easy. As soon as we get a little far, oh, God, you stepped on my toe. Lord, hurt my, help my tongue. And so you don't want to stay in a place where you can grow. You want to stay in a place where you can be comfortable. I don't want you to be comfortable because I'm trying to snatch you out of years of cultural church. Them folks over there in, in Israel don't even recognize the stuff that we do. A woman ain't supposed to wear pants. That ain't got nothing to do with the Jews. That's cultural. They didn't have pants on in the Bible. They wore dashikis. They wore robes. We made it cultural. 
So you see, man-made stuff. So you see, and then we honor that. We'll put somebody out the church because they walk in, a woman walk in with pants on. We'll put her out the church. That ain't what the Bible is. A, man, a woman ain't supposed to wear nothing pertaining to a man. Knucklehead, listen. There were no pants in the Bible. But this is the kind of stuff that we judging other folks on and putting them out the church. And, but see, we don't want to hear this. We don't want to hear this. See? See? Y'all, 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 what y'all don't know, Peter was a racist. Peter was prejudiced. You don't, you don't believe me? Okay. When Peter received word that the Gentiles had received the Holy Ghost, he said, uh-uh, there ain't no way they got it like us. And Peter, in the Holy Ghost, Jesus had to deal with Peter in a vision where he had a vision of this net and a bunch of fowls of the air. And Jesus, and, and in the vision, uh, Jesus came to him and said, don't you call unclean what I call clean. He had to come and repent. The same people that we praise in the Bible, they had issues against you. Ooh, I see y'all don't want to talk. Elder, you open it up. So why, so, so, so we got to get this together. Judgment going to start with us. All our fake tongue talking. Yeah, I said it. I'm, I, yeah. Fake gifts operating in. See, when God, when you operate in your gift, you may not like it, but he gives you wisdom with it. Not to get in your flesh. Okay. I'm probably going to lose some more folks. I'm trying to, listen, I'm trying to get you into a place. Because, see, this revival, it involves us. What is going to be the distinction to show the world our God. When we start doing miracles, signs, and wonders. See, that's why the devil don't want you to come, to, don't come into his presence. Stay home. That's a trick of the devil. Listen, there is something in corporate worship. When you look at the tabernacle, God's glory came and manifested in the tabernacle. When there's, it, there were even times when God said, call the assembly together. Tell them to come into the tent of meetings. This is the tent of meetings. This is where we come and assemble ourselves together. Miracles, signs, and wonders is going to manifest through us. We're going to be the ones that's going to be the ones that show the world our God. When God did something major, he used a man or a woman. Y'all missed that again. The problem is, God have you in the Red Sea, but you're still looking for a pillar of cloud. You don't need no pillar of cloud in the Red Sea. Pillar of cloud was good then. You want a new revelation, but using the old glory. Some of y'all still want a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. And the Lord said, you still want a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. Well, I'm trying to give you a wall of water. All right, I'm done. Elder, you, you did this. It's your fault. But I thank God for you. I thank God for you. You and your family, your husband. I ain't eating no pork or beef right now. But the time coming. Ooh, shy by ya, ya, ya. I'm teasing y'all. Listen, the elders are coming. We're getting ready to go off, off air. The elders are coming. We're getting ready to go home. If you're here and you're not saved, if you're online and you're not saved, and you want to be saved, I'm not talking about joining this church. I'm talking about your relationship with God. 
if you hear and you know, if you got a question, I'm not sure, you need to be making your way to this altar. If that's you online and you're not, I don't know if I'm saved or not, don't you leave this broadcast without accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let me tell you something. At the name of Jesus, every knee going to bow and every tongue going to confess that he is Lord. I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Afrocostal, Megacostal, I don't care what you are. At the name of Jesus, there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. It ain't got nothing to do with no denomination. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord. If that's you, I'm not talking about joining. If I go down, does that mean I'm joining this church? No. Those of you that are online, listen. Simply. The Bible says, if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that he was raised from the dead for you, you shall be saved. Simple. We make it all, you know, you know, you got to hear lightning. You got to see thunder. You got to hear the Lord say, you are saved. That's Hollywood. It's just a, accept him. That's it. He said, I paid the price. You said it, Elder. Just accept me. That's it. Now, here's the thing. It don't stop there. You need the Holy Ghost. Uh-oh. See, churches ain't talking about that now. I'm going to tell it. You need the Holy Ghost. Why? That's our power. That's our power. You can't fight the devil on your own. You got to have the Holy Ghost. It was given to you on the day of Pentecost as a gift. Somebody give you a gift, what you do? Just receive it. And I ain't going to put no, you got to get it this way. If you ain't on the altar tarrying, you ain't got it. No. Some received it that way. I received it that way, to be honest with you. But as I matured, I found out it wasn't because I was on the altar tarrying. It's because I opened up my heart and received it. I know some people that received the tarrying for the Holy Ghost. I know some people that received it at home washing dishes. It's about the day that you hear my voice, hard not your heart. I'll come in and sup with you. Some received it by the laying on the hands, as in Acts of, in the Acts of the Apostles. But I pray now that you receive the Holy Ghost because you need it. That's our power. Third, listen. You need covering. I, I say this so often. I cannot re-emphasize it enough. The devil is a liar to make you think, I'm good. No, you're not. You're good. And, and it, it, that's a trick of the devil. I, you're, Jesus my covering. Okay, all right, let's, let's debate that. Let's talk about it. If that was the case, if that was the case, he would not have given you pastors and shepherds. There would be no need for it. He said, I give, I, I give you. Pastors, and I give you a quarter from my heart. This was sanctioned and put in place by him. So why all of a sudden he put it in place and I don't need it? That's the enemy. That's Antichrist. You need a shepherd. You need a, a sheep does not know how to fight a lion and a bear. David did. Okay, all right. That lion and the bear would have been toe slapped up. I'm sorry, those sheep would have been toast. That line of battle would have went through them. But David was there. See, y'all don't want to talk. You need covering. You need covering. You need covering. You need to be in a place where you can grow, a place where you can be free, and a place where the word is coming for. And just because someone holds you accountable, that don't mean you tuck tail like, oh, I don't want. No, man, I'm trying. I'm a man in authority, but I'm under authority. I, I, do you think I like everything my bishop says to me? But guess what? I ain't going to tell him that. Y'all know bishop. What? Yes, sir, bishop. Yeah. Y'all yeah, know bishop don't play. But I need that level of accountability myself. See, you... Okay, if the Lord has spoken to you, we don't have to vote you in. 
If you're online, we don't have to vote you in. That's cultural church. How can we vote somebody into the Lord's church? The Bible says they were received into the fellowship of the brethren. We'll receive you in here. If you're online, we have our Covenant Life Partnership. You can simply just, just type in, I want to connect. I want to connect. And, and Elder who gave that word this morning, she's over our new members ministry. We'll be in contact with you. If you're here and you don't have covering, it's time now. Come on. We'll receive you. The elders are here. Come on. We'll receive you. You need a home. I'm telling you. Yeah. Finally, and I'm done. You need prayer. The fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. One can put a thousand, but two can put tens of thousands. If you need prayer, I don't care what it is. If you feel comfortable, come to this altar right here. The elders will pray for you. Matter of fact, Elder Jarvis, I want you to pray with him. That's a brother. Anybody else need prayer? Come on. Let's pray about it. Let's pray about it. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Being as sickly among you, let them call upon the elders of the church and they say pray, they shall pray the prayer of faith and you shall be here. Come on. Elder Green, pray with him. There you go, bro. Elder Green, he'll pray with you. These are men. I, this saying something right here. This is saying something powerful to me. When you get the men that's coming. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. This one, our young. She was getting her praise on this morning. Come on. They'll pray with you. Come on. This is what it's about. Bring all your struggle. Let me tell you, let me tell you so everybody here got a struggle. Don't trip on that stuff. Bring your struggle. Come on. Bring your issue. Come on. Come on. Bring it all. Come on. Bring it. That's the purpose that the, that the bride, the, the church, come on. Bring it. Bring it. Bring whatever it is. I don't care what it is. Homosexuality, lesbianism, it don't matter. Come on. Jesus died for that too. You struggling with alcohol? Jesus died for that too. You got a weed problem? Jesus died for that too. You got a cocaine problem? Jesus died for that too. I don't care what it is. Insecurity, Jesus died for that too. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. Thank you for this broadcast. Thank you for those that tune in this morning. I thank you for Elder. You gave her a word for the house. We praise you for it. Now as they're praying, we're going to prepare them to worship the Lord in our giving. Those of you that are online, listen. Those members that are online, we know that we have our special offering seed right now. Even those that are not here, every member, and if you're a guest, if you're a guest and you want to you want to sow into this effort, we've asked every member for a special hundred dollar seed above their tithe and offering. So we're asking every member to make sure you're in alignment. If you're a guest and you want to sow into this, please do so. Please do so. Online, listen, as the ushers have given the envelopes throughout the ministry, now those of you online, we have so many ways that you can give electronically. Here it is. You can utilize our cash app. Our cash app identifiers down the screen, dollar sign, new life, I-N-T-L. Those of you that are, that are in, make sure if you're, if you're sowing into, if you're giving this special offering into the seed offering for our special project, make sure you top, type in special offering so they can make sure we have proper records. You can use our cash app. Then we have our Givelify. Maybe you're not comfortable with that, but you have the Givelify app. There are our Givelify directors on screen. Type in New Life International Ministries bracket, making Georgia close bracket, and that will give you directly, take us directly to our Givelify. And you can use Givelify. Then we also have text to give. Our text to give number is 478-217-7262. Type in the dollar amount that you want to give. For instance, if you're giving $100, type in 100, press send, and follow the prompts. 
Then maybe you're not comfortable giving electronically, but you want to give, you want to sow. Amen. You can send it to our P.O. box. Cashier's check, money order, or personal check. New Life International Ministries, P.O. Box 6874. Macon, Georgia, 31208. Those of you all that are here, maybe you don't have cash, you're out of checks, but you have your debit card. We have our kiosk in the lobby. You can simply just go swipe the kiosk and with, your, with your debit card and you can give at our kiosk. But we just want you to sow. Amen. Lift it right now. Begin to wait for that as we bless it. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for these seeds. We thank you for this offering. We thank you for every giver. Lord, we stand in alignment with your word. You say you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that will not be ruined to receive. Lord, you say give and be given back to us. Press down, shaking together, running over. You will cause men to give to our bosom. Bless these seeds. Bless every sower. Allow this seed to spring forth the mighty harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, listen, thank you for tuning in and being a part of the new life experience i appreciate you i really do i really do appreciate you being with us this morning be prepared to be back with us this wednesday at seven for the hour of power bible study and we will be with uh, uh evangelist angela harris via zoom this friday we'll get those to get that flyer out as well amen so just be pray just on this same facebook page come back and be with us wednesday because we know a new life it's not just church it's an experience thank you for tuning in. Shine bright up all night, we're never slowing down. Fall in love, drunk mistakes, we're down to hit the ground. Gotta keep this feeling, keep on breathing. Mama